Hey, this is Stacy from Let's Cook, y'all. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We hope you enjoy these cooking videos and our weekly what's for dinner, and you'll consider hitting that red subscribe button. We're back with a new video in our What Can I Make With That series. This one is all about crescent rolls. I think everybody loves crescent rolls, and I'm sure there's a thousand and one things to do with them, but here's some of the things that we like to do in our house with a good old can of crescent rolls. To top the chicken crescents, I take some flavored croutons, put them in a Ziploc, and crush them up. You'll need about a half to three quarters of a cup. You can make an extra step and pulse some fresh bread and make breadcrumbs and add whatever seasonings you like and then toast them, but using the prepackaged is easier. I use canned chicken. You can also cook your own chicken. You'll need about a cup. For the filling, we're going to mix two tablespoons of softened or melted butter, three ounces of cream cheese, and mush that all together and then add your chicken. Add about two tablespoons of milk and then some salt and pepper to taste. I usually don't use very much salt. And then one tablespoon of dried minced onion. I've honestly always followed the recipe and I've never tried cutting up fresh onion. It would probably work, but I've just always used the dried. Unroll your can of crescent dough. I always make a note of whatever the can says for the times and temperatures. That's usually what we'll do for most of these recipes. This is going to make four crescents, so we're going to unroll out the triangles and pinch the seams of two of them together. So the eight triangles will make four squares for the filling. I take my spoon and kind of make a quarter dividing line in my filling and then plop it on there and spread it out. There's multiple ways to fold these. I found the easiest way for me is just to pull up on each short end and kind of make a little package. Pull each side and then I kind of tuck in the other sides and tuck them under. I have tried going diagonally. I have tried going long ways. This is the method that has just worked best for me through the years where the filling does not tend to leak out quite as much. I melt a little bit of butter in the microwave in a ramekin and then take a pastry brush and very lightly brush the tops. You don't want to make them soggy. And then take the crushed croutons or the breadcrumbs that you've made and try to press them into the butter and get as many on the top as you can. This makes a nice little crisp topping once they're baked in the oven. The chicken crescents bake at 350 for about, the recipe says 20 to 25 minutes, but I'm going to check them about 12 to 15 golden brown out of the oven. We eat these with fries, sometimes soup, any kind of vegetables or chips or fruit on the side. We love chicken crescents. For a fun little snack or dessert, we like to make easy chocolate croissants or chocolate crescents. Simple ingredients I always have on hand. We're going to mix up some cinnamon sugar, unroll the crescent dough, and you will need some mini chocolate chips for this recipe. Unroll the eight triangles and then take some cinnamon sugar that you've mixed up. I just do it to my taste. I really don't even measure. And sprinkle that on each of the triangles and then add however many little mini chocolate chips you want and roll them up. Bake these in the oven for the package directions for the crescent rolls or we tried them in our air fryer for five minutes. I always top these with some powdered sugar as soon as they're hot out of either the oven or the air fryer. Uh, you might want to get two cans of crescent rolls and double these. These are always a favorite here and they go really quick. These are easy chocolate crescents. Another savory idea is to make some ham and cheese pinwheels. First we're going to mix up the topping. You'll need some melted butter, yellow mustard, dried onion and some poppy seeds and I will leave a link to the recipe website where I got this from. I also added some Worcestershire sauce and we're going to mix that all together. This particular recipe is a lot easier if you purchase one of the crescent dough sheets that they sell in the grocery store. I did not have that today so I took the crescent rolls out and pinched the seams together and tried to make as cohesive a slab of dough to work with as possible. But yes, it's much easier if you've got the dough sheet, but use what you've got. 
Then we lay out the ham. The original recipe calls for three quarters of a pound. I just used a package from the lunch meat section of my grocery store and I don't think I used the entire package. Then we'll lay out some sliced Swiss cheese. Again, the recipe says 12 slices. I think I only used about seven, but use as much as you like. Then we will start rolling it up from the long end into a big log. Place the log seam side down and I go to the center and then make five more cuts. So you're gonna get 12 pieces total and go ahead and place these in your baking dish and then spread the butter mixture on top. We will bake the ham and cheese pinwheels in a preheated 350 degree oven, uncovered for about 25 minutes. When these come out of the oven, there's usually still some butter stuff sizzling around so I like to let them sit five or ten minutes it usually reabsorbs all of that stuff and they're a little soggy they're not overly crisp but we love them these ham and cheese pinwheels are always a favorite in our house pepperoni crescents are a fun snack or for a really light supper you take the triangles of the crescent roll dough and roll them out I take some melted butter and a little garlic powder to it to make a quick garlic butter. Brush each of the triangles. Then you will lay out some pepperoni. I usually use three per slice on top of the garlic butter. And then you take either a piece of string cheese or I've also used a wedge of a white cheddar and put it in the long end and then roll each of these up from the long end. Brush with a little more garlic butter on the top and then bake according to the crescent roll directions in the oven. We've also done these in the air fryer. We eat these with fries or a salad for a little light supper. I usually make bacon swirls or bacon crescents to take as an appetizer to a party, but they would probably work for breakfast. You'll take the can of crescent rolls and unroll the triangles and put two together to form four rectangles and I am doubling this recipe because I was taking it somewhere but you'll pinch the seams together for the triangles then you'll take three ounces of softened cream cheese and mix in two tablespoons of minced dried onion again I'm doubling this recipe and it does take a little bit of work to get all the onion incorporated so keep stirring then you'll add about a teaspoon of milk or however much you need to loosen it up and make it spreadable after you get the cream cheese and the onion combined well, then you add five slices of bacon that you've cooked and crumbled or an equivalent amount of bacon bits. Then you'll take the mixture and spread on each of the four triangles. I tried a knife and found it, remembered that it worked better with the back of a spoon. You wanna go out to the edges of each of the dough sheets. We're gonna roll each of these little logs up on the long end to make four little bitty skinny logs that we will cut into very small bite-sized little pinwheels or wedges. Place on a baking sheet. You can put them close together because they don't really spread much. I'm using my sill pat and then top with some grated or shaved Parmesan cheese. These go in a preheated 375 degree oven, just what the crescent rolls say. Mine say 375 for about 11 to 14 minutes, so I'm gonna check them at 11. My first batch is out of the oven. They're very small, little finger size appetizers. They work well to take places. This is one batch. I do double it, because I tend to like to take uh, enough. This is about two and a half dozen little bite size pieces. So these are bacon crescents. They're really good for breakfast, brunch, a snack, an appetizer, an hors d'oeuvre. One of my favorite things in the whole wide world are these apple dumplings. I've seen them made with other sodas besides Mountain Dew. I think you could use Sprite or 7-Up, but we've always made this family recipe with Mountain Dew. You'll need two cans of crescent rolls and a 9 by 13 pan, two sticks of butter, two Granny Smith apples, one and three quarters cup of sugar, some cinnamon and some vanilla, and a 12 ounce bottle of Mountain Dew, or we're just gonna measure out of this big two liter that I had on hand. First thing we're gonna do is we've preheated the oven to 350. We're gonna make up the sauce that goes over the rolled crescent rolls with apples by melting the butter. And then we're gonna add sugar, vanilla, and cinnamon. I'm gonna prepare the apples. We're gonna peel two Granny Smiths and then core them and cut each apple into eight pieces. We need 16 sections of apples to roll in the 16 crescent rolls. I 
I've taken about a tablespoon or two of water and added it to the micro to the apples. We're going to throw them in the microwave for a couple minutes just to soften them up so it won't take quite as long for them to cook in the oven. On the stove, the butter has melted. I've added the sugar, the cinnamon, and the oven is ready. And a teaspoon of vanilla. We're going to mix this together and then kind of bring it to a thick sauce to pour over the apples. Take a slice of apple and put it in the long end and then roll the crescent roll up. Do that 16 times until you've got all of them made and then pour the thickened butter sauce over the top. And then you take a 12 ounce can of Mountain Dew, or in my case 12 ounces from a 2 liter, and pour it around the edges. Bake in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. These are delicious apple dumplings. You should definitely make this one soon. We recently made some easy cheese danish in our air fryer, but you could easily make them in the oven. We're going to mix the filling together, 8 ounces of softened cream cheese, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a half a cup of sugar. Just blend that with a hand mixer for the filling. I got out some crescent rolls and pinched together the seams, form two, and then I split the filling between the can of crescent rolls, so a fourth of the filling at a time. And I'll show you my trial and error. I was trying to figure out how to fold them on the ends. The first one was a little harder. The second, third, and fourth one went a lot better. You make a triangle on each end and then fold the long side up, and I went ahead and kind of crimped them. These are the little disposable pans that I found I've been using in my air fryer, and yes, I'm going to do these in the air fryer, but they're easily done in the oven. This is just a simple cheese danish using crescent rolls, cream cheese, vanilla, and sugar. These came out really well. Like I said, the second and third ones went a lot quicker. Fold a triangle at each end and then pull them up. The original recipe said to cook them in the air fryer 320 for four minutes. That didn't work for me. I ended up going a little bit longer. As expected, 320 for four minutes is not nearly enough. I do cook a can of crescent rolls at 350 for six. I think I will put this first batch back at 350 for another two or three. Probably need to rotate the pan, but we're going to go with this and see what it does. That looks better. Air fryer cheese danish. The other two I just put in the same pan. I just sprayed it with some more nonstick spray. I think these I'm going to try at 350 for six. So if you have a can of crescent rolls, cream cheese, vanilla, sugar, and an air fryer or an oven, you can make these easy cheese danish. They're delicious. A recipe we've shown in a previous air fryer only video is some easy air fried Oreos. You freeze the Oreos and then wrap them in crescent roll dough and then cook them in the air fryer. Dust them with powdered sugar when they're done and these things are delicious. I'm going to try the double stuff next time. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Take care. Have a wonderful and truly blessed day.